Okay, so as we get started, let's uh, focus on creating the project, copying in the assets, and then focus the, uh, the, the majority of our time laying out our application. We're going to take a slightly different layout approach than we've taken before, maybe use a couple of different techniques as well. So uh, without any further ado, let me turn off the webcam so I can focus. And we're going to create a new project. And I'm just going to call this UWP Soundboard. And uh, we'll do what we always do here, and we'll remove the, uh, the frame counter completely. And then what I want to do is add assets, and there's a couple of different types of assets for this project. You can download these. Um, from the previous video or this video, I don't know, look for the, the download associated with, with one of those videos. Now you'll notice a pattern here that there are categories of audio and then icons that belong with those audio WAV files. And so each of those subfolders have two WAV files. Um, and whoa, if we go back to uh, the images, they'll match just with a PNG extension as opposed to a wave extension. The next type of folder we have here are icons, and these will be used in the split view uh, in, the, in the pane where we display usually a list view of, uh, of options, and each of those represent a category. And then finally, here's the package FX manifest, and these are uh, logo and and icons and icons that are used for like splash screen things that are going to be required as we submit our app to the uh, the Windows Store okay so unfortunately the way that you copy these in not as easy as personally I would like uh, you'll see that there's a little bit of a weirdness here so audio has a subfolder and then inside of there you have files right so when you drag and drop, like for example, this into your assets folder, you'll notice that there's no subfolders in there, and they're supposed to be. You're like, huh, okay, well I guess I didn't copy them in. So you go and you go to those subfolders, and you drag and drop those, and it'll say, wait a second, they're already there. <laughs> and you're like, what? So let's go ahead and just hit apply to all items, yes, yes, and it'll stick them all in there. So we should have four categories with two WAV files per category in the audio subfolder. Great. We'll take that same approach here in the icons folder. Here again, I'll just drag and drop that icon folder. It says it doesn't have anything in there. We know better, it just didn't add them to the project. So let's go and grab, drag and drop, and let's say, are you sure? We already have them in there. No, you don't. Add them. And we'll do this again for the images for each of the audio files. Here again. No subfolders, but we know they're there. We'll drag and drop, stick them in. You sure you want to do this? Yes, do it, do it. And then finally, let's go to the app, app package AppX manifest folder that I created and go through this little dance again. Yes to all. All right, so that's out of the way. We'll come back and we'll use those a little bit later. Let me go ahead and pull this strip out there. Close up assets and pop open main page.xaml. So I'm going to take a slightly different layout approach this time. Uh, we will have a layout grid, and that'll give us the topmost uh, row, which will contain a relative panel with the hamburger button, back button, and the search uh, the auto, um, whatever it is, auto suggest box. And then in that second row, we'll put a split panel. So let's start that process. So here we go row definitions, whoops, grid dot row definitions, uh, row definition high equals auto. And we've done this at least a dozen times already, right? So this shouldn't be too hard. Here we're going to put a relative panel, and this again will contain that top matter. And then below that we'll put a split view, and that'll contain everything in the main body. 
So um, in this relative panel, I'm going to want to put, first of all, the hamburger button. I'm going to add a back button. And then I'm going to add an auto suggest box. And that'll be, let's just go ahead and put um, relative panel align right with panel equals true. Here I'm going to give this one a name of a hamburger button and then this one would be a relative panel dot align left I think it's align left with oh I'm sorry align right of just right of the hamburger button there we go and then this would be just um, let's go ahead and go uh, relative panel align left with panel all right that should be pretty much self-evident but I'll put it in there anyway I'm gonna go ahead and add a click event here because I know I'm gonna need it Let me go ahead and space these guys out I also know I'm gonna need to put uh, For example, the um, font family is going to be Sago MDL2 assets. And then the uh, content will be uh, let me see if I can remember how to do this ampersand and X E. 700 semicolon if I got that right from memory I will be impressed with myself which just goes to show no but you know I don't memorize this most people don't memorize these obscure little things you that's why you have a cheat sheet or you have the cheat sheet called the internet you can always reference yep I got it right Wow I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> it's the little things, right? Okay, um, so next up, I need a name for this button, so let's give it the name of back button. And so that's necessary because I'm going to give it the uh, click equals new event handler. And then here again, I want font family equals go mdl2 assets and then uh, content. E something or other. Let me go figure this out. I'm going to open up, you know, I got to the point where I decided I'm going to put the character map right here on my taskbar. And uh, I think this is the one I want. There's a there's a bunch of these back arrows uh, they have for, I guess, various use, uses, but uh, I'll use this one. 0A6. That should be sufficient. 0A6. And then uh, the auto suggest box. There's really not much I need to do here. I, I would need to give it a name though. So let's go with, give it the name, the name of um, search auto suggest box. And um, I'm going to put placeholder text equal to search for sounds. Uh, I know I want the width to be 200 from that previous exercise that we did together. And I know the query icon. I want the find query icon. And then I know that I'm going to handle the text changed event because we're going to filter the list based on that. Uh, and then I also know that I want the query submitted event uh, to handle that one as well. Uh, everything else, though, I'm going to leave for now. We'll come back to that in a little while whenever we try to actually get that, that functionality working. Let's see now. That's the relative panel. Okay, now we haven't touched the split view yet, so let's, I think, well, let's see what we have first before we move on here. See if there's anything glaringly wrong with anything I've done up to this point. These look awfully small. Uh, I'll probably change the height and the width of the buttons themselves and then change the font. 
So I'm going to use um, height and width of 45 like we did in the previous exercise for these buttons. Um, so height equals 45, width equals 45. I like that. It's, that feels good to me. And then um, also I want to set the font size. Set it to 20. Great. All right, so that should be... That should be good enough for now with that relative panel area. Okay, great. Uh, need some padding, but we'll come back for that later. All right, next up, split view. Let's give it a name because we're going to have to reference it programmatically. So my split view. Uh, display mode, I know I want that to be compact overlay. Uh, I also know that I want the compact pane length equal to be 45. That would be the width of the buttons that I have above it, so I like that. And then the open pane length, oh, I don't know, 150 should be fine, but let me just go to 200 here. I seem to remember it's going to be a little bit larger for some reason having gone through this once already. All right, so that's good. So we got that, and now inside of this, I need the split view dot pane, and then I need the split view dot content. In the pane, we're gonna have a list box like we always have had, or actually, I'm sorry, I'm gonna do things a little bit different this time. I'm gonna use a list view this time. I'm going to bind to the items and just uh, use data binding and bind to a list that I'll create in the code behind for the main page.xaml. Uh, I guess I will work on that in this lesson. Um, at any rate, uh, let me see. I know that we want the is item click enabled equals true on this. I know I'm going to handle the item click event on this as well. I uh, probably should give it a name. Bummer. So name equals uh, menu items list view. And so let me regenerate that. Item click equals new event handler. Great. And I know I need a template, and I'm, I know I need a source. I'll come back to that in a minute. Now, in this area, I'm actually going to add, in the content area, I'm going to add a grid because I'm going to actually split this into two rows. There will be a top row that will contain the, um, what's being displayed in the main area, and then below that I'll have the, uh, the items that will be displayed. So uh, I'm going to need some row definitions so row definition height equals auto and then do star in that one great and um, so I know whoops 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 let's not get here in the wrong spot okay there we go in this top row I'm gonna add a stack panel and it's just gonna contain a text block. In fact, I don't even know that I need the stack panel, honestly. I could probably do without it. In fact, I will do without it. Let's get rid of it. Let's just go straight with the text block. And we'll set uh, name category text block. Text equals all sounds. That'll be the default text in there. And um, I'm going to make this kind of like a header. So we'll set the font size to 24. Okay, And then in the lower area, I'll add the grid view beneath that, and that'll contain all of our items. And we'll set that grid.row equals 1. And I'll call this name sound grid view. All right, and this is really the key one that we want to focus on. Um, we want to set the whoops, 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 whoops. The selection 
mode equal to none. All I want somebody to be able to do is click on a sound and to play the sound. I don't need selection. Uh, I do want to set the is item click enabled equals true because I do want it to be clickable. And so then the item click event should be handled. Now I know I'm going to need an item source and all that business. Uh, and I'll come back to that. So let's go uh, grid view dot uh, item template and then set the data template and then set the uh, let's put an image inside of there equals my image and I know I happen to know that the height and the widths are kind of weird because um, when I gave the specifications to the guy uh, who was working on it I I just gave him some arbitrary number based on a mock-up that I'd created. I think this is 101. Yeah, it's, I look at my notes here. I see it's 101 width. And we're going to have to set the, the source on that as well. We'll come back to that later whenever we do the data binding uh, in the, um, I guess, in the next in the next lesson. Now, there's one other interesting little thing that I'm going to stick here as well in this area. And that is the media element. And a media element allows you to play sounds, and we'll become very familiar with that two videos from now. But let me go ahead and give it the name My Media Element. And I'm going to set a property called Auto Play equals true. And that just says, hey, whenever you get, when I give you a, um, a, uh, a source, so assets slash sound slash cow whatever just go ahead and play it don't even I'm not gonna programmatically tell you to start and stop playing it just play auto play all right uh, I think that's all that I'm gonna do here in this first video we covered a lot of ground there's a lot left to do um, but we'll come back and get them in subsequent passes at this so at this point there's really not a lot to this app it's just kind of the shell and we'll come back and we'll, um, we'll fill in a lot of this stuff. Okay, pick it up in the next lesson. Thanks.